Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is me doing day 10 of the Leco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, drop me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. Uh, I actually just forgot about this almost. Uh, I did the contest, the nightly contest, and I did finish top 100 in both the bi week and re weekly th this, uh, this week, uh, which is good, I suppose. I mean, um, I think. I don't know, I think some part of it is that Metal Dawn training is over, so I feel like maybe I'm getting some of that mental energy back. Though, if you watch the videos, I was also still a little bit tired, but uh, but I think part of it is that, honestly, uh, I think the problems are a little bit more difficult now, um, which is maybe advantageous for me, because I think a lot of the times where I, do, I, I don't do well is because I'm... Um, rushing a little bit and making silly mistakes. And if you watch the um, weekly contest, I actually did a good, uh, or I don't know about good, a better job of just kind of slowing myself down. The times are a little bit slower as a result, but because of the harder, uh, more difficult uh, problems, um, I was, you know, like I was still able to solve them just a little bit slower. But, um, but you know, it just makes it harder for other people to kind of just, you know, um, get a typing contest. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's been a weekend, so let's get started uh, at today's farm. We have 3097, shortest subway with or at least K2. Okay. You're given an array nums of non negative integers and an integer K, and array is called special if the bit vice or of all its elements is at least K. Return the length of the shortest special uh, non empty subarray of nums or return negative one if no special subarray exists. Okay, so we're trying to find the smallest um, is it a, a subarray such that it is going to be... Yeah. Okay. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is going to be a sliding window, right? The reason is because... you can, The reason why you can think about it is that um, if you're given a window, if you add a number, that's going to make you go... It'll always make you at least the same number or bigger, right? And then you're going to keep on going that way. And if set is, if the condition is met, then you can always swap to the left, right? Um, another way that I've been f saying it uh, recently um, is just thinking about the contribution, right? I mean, we think about with sliding windows, I think very often with, well, it's in the name, if we have a window that slides. But what, what I want to be more explicit about with this window is what are you trying to do with this window? And I think I've been, a, and you know, uh, I'm learning too. And I think the way that I've been thinking about it a little bit better, uh, more precise, is that given a window, um, the right side or the left side, depending on how you want to phrase it, but I always, or generally try to phrase it on the right side. So this right side, um, of the window, the last number in the window, or maybe sometimes it's the one to the left of it or something like this, but last one of the number, then what is the the shortest sub away where um, the condition, whatever the condition is, for this one will be the uh, bitwise or the condition is still true. Um, so that basically you're saying, okay, if the right side of the sub away is this last element, what is the answer for this uh, like what is the shortest where this is the last element and then you kind of keep on asking yourself the same question in that way it slides because you're asking it for everything on the right uh, and then on the left it just keeps on it's going to be monotonically increasing or monotonically moving to the right because um, because moving to the left will always give you a bigger number which doesn't make sense right so okay so that's really the way that I would think about it um, so yeah so then we're for range in range of oh sorry for right in range of n we set left as you go zero and this is just how i way often think about sliding window right so then now first of all, we have this we have to construct um so then now we have the current bitwise or um the this one is a little bit tricky because basically with the what we said about sliding windows there are two components right one is kind of just adding the new numbers, putting the right side in the window, and then the others will be mo uh, moving to the left. And of course, moving to the right is going to be easy because maybe you would have like a, a window or as you go to zero or something like this. Um, sometimes I just call it current because I'm, I don't know, it's a very useless generic name. But you do a bitwise or and this will be good. However, what happens is that you cannot 
uh, like removing it from the left is a little bit tricky, right? This, at this point, we want to do something into the left. What do you do, right? Um, to kind of like move the window. Because basically the idea that you would write is that, um, is that okay. So then now, uh, while window or is greater than or equal to k, that means that now, now num sub right, uh, uh, yeah, um, Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, uh, I think in, in for th these problems, the way that I would think about it is also that um, you have to define your invariance very carefully, which is why I'm sorry for a little bit of a pause, because I want to say that in a very precise or as precise as I could have it wait right, right you have to define your invariance very carefully for example in this case we, we want to end this such that um, left minus one inclusive or inclusive really is the last number or last uh, index where window or is going to be greater than you know, k, okay. and what that also means that it is that if left is equal to zero, that means that left minus one is um, our bound, so that's not going to be true. So that means that if left is greater than zero, then we have some stuff where, um, well, that means that now we can go to say like a best, which is to to find the shortest length because we're shortest, we just do infinity. But now this we can do best of uh, so we have two indexes, right? We have right that that is inside. We have left that's inside, and then plus one for the you know whatever, right? So this that 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 this is a candidate, and we're trying to find the min. So we just take the min over the best and the min, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, so in I kind of skipped over, I jumped a little bit, right? Um, but the, this is the invariant that we're trying to hold. And of course, if this is the invariant, then now we, if the window O is greater than you go to K, we will try to remove the left side of the window. And this is the part which maybe, you know, we, this is the part of the bitwise O, which if you, um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're just not, uh, up to, you know, practice or, studying or whatever with the bitwise or this may be a little bit troubling because you go okay well how do i remove the number of or right or how do i remove how do i determine whether i know uh whether um we remove some uh, when the, uh a bit goes from go a bit going from zero to one makes sense right because you have to just bitwise or but a bit going from one to zero what does that mean that's the question that you have to ask yourself right of course um, and the the way that uh, you would think about it for this particular one is actually just that um, just that well a bitwise or just uh, you kind of think about it visually right if it has even just one if you're doing bitwise all these numbers if it had just one one then it's going to be a one so the only time that is a zero is if that all of them are zero right. In a bitwise or for every bit. So with that in mind, then we can just keep track of um, the number of ones per bit in the window. How many bits do we have to care about? Well, 10 to the 9 is basically 2 to the 32, right? Mm, 31 maybe. Or, I, I guess 30 to be even more precise, but I, you know, might not just do up to 32, right? Uh, do I, I guess yesterday was 64 or something like this, right? But, but yeah, so then now we can maybe just keep track of counts uh duh, 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 times 32 and maybe b for bits right uh and count sub i is going to be the number of one ones in the number uh in the numbers inside i the window of for the i bit right and here um Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? And then now, here, when when we do add in a bit, uh, I mean, this is fine, but 
but we still have to keep track of counts, right? So when we add in to the right, we, we now do a loop, right? So for i in range of b, um, if the i've set the i if num sub right, if the uh, the i bit is set, means means if it's greater than zero, right? Uh, then count sub i we increment by one, and that's really just keeping track of this, right? And then now on the removal is the exact opposite, right? So then now we have uh, for i in range of b, if num sub uh, left and the uh, bitwise thing of zero, th then we subtract one from this, right? Because that means that one of the ones left, right? And then if counts of i is equal to zero, that means that it's time to remove the bit because, well, we have no bits left, right? So that means that window or, uh, and you could actually do this in a number of ways. I actually, I, I prefer this just because, I don't know, this seems more straightforward, but that's what I mean by like, People think you memorize these things, and honestly, when I when I was starting out, and this is a long time ago, I did try to memorize these things, and I would always kind of make silly mistakes um, because, like, oh, maybe sometimes I do right shift, sometimes I do I minus right, and all these things. There are actually like many ways to write these, and I don't recommend necessarily only the way that I write it, but I'm just used to the way that I write it. But but it's just about um, thinking about for what it means, right? For example, the other way that people you uh, often do is just do like a do 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 something like this, right? And what th this does is just that uh, this will give you all ones except for one zero in one of the bits. That's what the ne negation does, and then we just add it, making sure that um, all the one other ones it doesn't affect it. But except for this bit, it will always change it to zero. So that that's just like some stuff about bitwise, right? So okay, so that's basically the idea uh, for this one, and we can give it a spin. Uh, I forget to set infinity. I, don't know, I always choose something big. Uh, let's run for more than just the first case. Uh, Hmm, why is that? Oh, because k is zero, so it just goes for all of them. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, we can definitely also make sure that left is greater than right in this case, because this will always be true otherwise. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we have to be a little bit cleaner in this one, because I think this is left is greater than right. So that when left is... Yeah, because the reason why is because we choose left minus one inclusively, so it has to go left plus one afterwards to have one element. It's a little bit weird, but I know. But that's why. Oh, oh! But that's why I said that you have to be precise about this. But apparently today I was not that precise because uh, I have an infinity thing. Uh, oh, I forgot to do the negative one thing, right? I, I did actually remember reading about this, but then I just forgot about it. Uh, yeah, so best is greater than infinity, then we just return negative one. I, I remember reading about it, and then, I don't know. I mean, I don't, some of it is a little bit careless, honestly, but I, I don't, you know. I mean, I think you have to think about what you're training for, right? And for me, um, some part of it, and I do this during the contest as well, so it's not just this, but some of it is because I am trying to explain the problem. And when I do, um, I, don't, I'm a little bit old, I'm a little bit sad, and I just forget about things that I was like, I kept it. If I was coding during a contest, I might have uh, remembered to, you know, uh, because I, I it, because I talk about a lot of stuff in between, and then I just forget about stuff. I lose track. I'm old. I'm sorry, but that's all I have for today, though. Uh, well, let's go over the complexity really quick, actually. But this is mostly sliding window, so this is an O of n loop. Um, this is an over b loop. Uh, this is also an o, well. This part's over b. The left can only go to the right side n times, right? In total, in aggregate. That's where you get the conversation about amortization, and this is why this is O of n times b. And that's pretty much it, uh, all of B space from here. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I need some sleep. Stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.